that was our red shouldered hawk greeting you. Good morning from the Carolina Raptor Center and thank you for tuning into our second avian home adventure. I have just a real quick update. I did want to let everyone know that we've decided in light of everything um, to close our public trail for the next couple of days. Um, we're going to take some time to reassess um, and we'll post updates on our Facebook and our website to let you know if and when um, the trail reopens. We are, however, still taking in patients to our hospital. So if you find um, an injured bird of prey, please call our hospital um, because we are still taking patients in. And so again, welcome in um, woo, to our second uh, avian home adventure. My name is Kate Shaner and this is McKenna Schaefer. Um, and today uh, we are going to answer a really commonly asked question. Um, we get asked all the time to identify birds um, from people's yards. Uh, and so today, um, and really the most common one is going to be the difference between uh, the two most common types of hawks that we have in our area. And that's going to be the red-shouldered hawk and the red-tailed hawk. So we do have both of those hawks here for you to meet today. And we'll go over some of the main differences so that when you are backyard birding, um, you can uh, differentiate between the two. Um, so I have with me a red-shouldered hawk. Her name is Lakota. Um, and so I'm gonna flip her around because as their names um, might tell you, the red-tailed hawk is going to have a red tail. Um, and the red-shouldered hawk is going to have red shoulders and their tail is actually black and white striped. Um, so if you do have an opportunity to see these birds in your yard and you can see their back, um, that's a really good way to tell the difference. Um, it does get a little bit more tricky because the red-tailed hawk does not get their red tail until they are sexually mature, which happens at about age two to three. Up until then, um, their tail, um, I actually have one here to show you, um, their tail can be a little deceiving um, because it is not red. Um, but another way uh, to tell the difference between the two is going to be to look at the front of them. So um, the red-shouldered hawk is going to have a lot more of that um, barn red color on the front of them, whereas the red-tailed hawk is going to have a lot of white on their front, and then they have a dark speckling of feathers across um, their midsection. We like to call it a belly band or a belly belt um, because that's what it looks like. Um, while we're doing these lives, please um, ask questions. And we want to know what you guys want to know uh, about these birds. So ask questions um, and the folks filming um, can ask them to me and I can answer them. Uh, as you probably heard when we started filming, uh, the red-shouldered hawk has a very distinct call. Um, you could hear her screaming away. And right now these birds are very active and they're very vocal uh, because it is breeding season. Um, so. Uh, if you can hear them in your neighborhood or you can hear them while you're out hiking, um, most likely it is going to be a red-shouldered hawk. They often vocalize while they're flying around. Uh, so it's another good way to identify them. Linda says she hears them all the time. Linda <laughs> says she hears them all the time, yes. So do we. Um, actually, the reason that Lakota started calling was because we have a, a wild pair that decided that Lotta Nature Preserve right here at the Carolina Raptor Center was a fabulous place to make their nest. Um, so they have decided to take up residence right over our hospital um, and they have decided that the Raptor Center is great hunting grounds so they fly around all the time screaming um, and they get our residents like Lakota here very excited. Um, so that's why she was screaming because right before we went live uh, they were flying overhead. How heavy is she? How heavy is she? That's a great question. Um, contrary to popular belief and contrary to what she might look like, um, she is actually quite light. Um, she weighs in just at about a pound and a half. Um, and in the raptor world, females are larger than males. Um, and so she is going to be um, the heavier of the two. Um, so again, she's about right around 700 to 750 grams. Um, we do weigh our birds in grams because a lot of times um, our birds don't even weigh a pound. Um, and so we weigh our birds in grams. So she is about 750 grams, which is about a pound and a half. 
Can you tell them apart when they're flying? Can you tell them apart when you're flying? Um, the best thing to do is if they're uh, flying and the sun is shining, you can look for that red tail. Um, and that's, that's a good way um, to try to differentiate between the two. Alice would like to know, what do they eat? What are they eating today? What are they eating today? So at the Raptor Center, we do give them a varied diet. Um, they wouldn't eat the same thing in the wild, especially the red-shouldered hawk. They are opportunistic hunters. They will eat just about anything. Um, they have adapted really well to living um, in urban areas, so around people. So they'll eat fish, they'll eat frogs, they'll eat other birds, they'll eat mice. Um, so they eat a big variety of things and we try to replicate that here at the Raptor Center. Um, so today she is eating Mises pieces, which is basically just mouse cut up into small pieces. Um, other days she will get quail, which is a really um, a meaty bird that has lots of really good nutrients. Some days they get chicken. Um, it's actually the reason that a lot of our birds have really, really bright yellow skin. Um, that is not the normal skin color of a red-shouldered hawk. They're gonna have I'm definitely more of a muted colored skin. Hers is bright yellow and a lot of our birds have that because of the chicken that they're eating. Um, the chicken is a one day old baby chicken. It still has the yolk sac inside of it. So as they eat that chicken, they're eating the yolk sac. Um, and because of those really strong nutrients in the yolk sac, it actually dyes their skin that yellow color. It's the same phenomenon that happens with a flamingo in the pink color. How old is she? Elizabeth would like to know how old she is. How old is she? <laughs> it can be a difficult thing for us. We have 93 birds that live here at the Raptor Center, so remembering 93 birthdays is hard. The good news is I've been working with Lakota um, for six years now, so I know that she is 17 years old. Um, and she has been at the Raptor Center um, since she was a baby. She was one of those babies that fell out of her nest, which happens a lot with babies. Um, raptors are not the best nest builders. Um, sometimes they'll actually just find holes in trees and put their babies in there. Um, so if there's a strong wind or a storm, oftentimes babies will come out of the nest. Um, it does not mean that they need to come to our hospital. Um, I think tomorrow our, our Facebook Live is going to be in the hospital talking about nestlings and all the things that we can do to prevent them from having to come into our hospital. Um, so, but she was one that came in because she did have an injury when she fell out of her nest. Um, so she has been here for pretty much her entire life. So that's why we know her exact birthday. Um, sometimes it can be hard if they come in as adults because they don't come with a driver's license mm -hmm. or identification. Um, mm -hmm. So we know their birthdays. John would like to know what time of the year do they have babies and how many babies? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so this is the time of year right now where they um, have already paired up. Um, they have pretty much established a nest and they might actually already be incubating on eggs. Um, and typically it's going to be between two and three eggs. And um, if they do have three eggs, um, the chances of all three hatching are going to be slim. Um, it's usually around two babies. That's, that's um, pretty much max for what they can feed and take care of um, reasonably. Uh, so right now is the time. Uh, these birds will take about three months to be fully grown and fledging from the nest. Um, so late spring, early summer is when the babies will be fledging and um, they pretty much leave the nest and leave mom and dad right away. And then after that um, takes place, mom and dad are gonna split up, go about their separate ways. Um, raptors are very solitary for most of their life. They don't congregate in large groups, um, vultures being an exception to that. Um, so right now is the time that you would see them together in pairs flying around screaming. <laughs> Laura would like to know, how can you tell hawks apart from other birds? Um, well, from other birds in general. In flight, sorry. Oh, in flight. Um, size is going to be a big one. Um, it's, it's hard to tell oftentimes um, if you're just, you know, if you see them up in the sky and they're at a great distance away, um, the difference between a hawk and maybe something else large like a vulture. Um, it's kind of hard to tell the difference because they are both are large with large wingspans. Um, so the best thing I would say is to go online and look at some silhouettes and some differences. Um, if you do see vultures, um, if you can tell that it is a vulture, a good way to tell the difference between a turkey vulture and a black vulture, if they're in the air with their wings out flying, is that a black vulture is going to have the tips of the underside of their wings as white. 
um, and a turkey vulture is going to have the entire underside of their wing as white. So that's a good way to tell the difference between the vultures in mid flight. Uh, Elizabeth would like to know, does she ever get angry or act out? <laughs> does she get angry or act out? Um, so really, she doesn't get angry or act out. Um, it's more so she just becomes very vocal, especially when the wild red shoulders are flying around, um, kind of agitating her. Um, and it's just really, they, they make all of that noise to keep in touch. Um, so that's what she's doing. She is especially vocal. Um, if the wild red shoulders are flying around and I've just fed her, um, it's kind of her announcement that I have food, I have food, I have food, because that's what they would do um, naturally out in the wild. <laughs> Where do hawks sleep at night? Where do they sleep? Um, so they would, um, they are diurnal or daytime hunters. Um, so they really do capitalize on the daytime. They use their eyesight to find their food. Um, so at nighttime, they do hunker down in their nests um, and they don't really, aren't really um, mobile at night. If you can hear it, I don't know if it's picking up uh, on the, and that's why she's kind of oriented her body in this direction is that the, the wild red shoulder is back um, and it's over my left shoulder. So she's kind of turned herself. Um, so you might hear another scream from her momentarily. We'll see if she's going to do it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining us for our second avian home adventure. Um, if you have questions that we haven't answered, please put them in the comments um, and we will answer them um, for you um, after we're done here. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys tomorrow.